Good afternoon, everyone. Um, last year, I did give a talk uh, in in a, in a audience like this. It was in the other um, venue, and my first feeling was that well, ten minutes is not enough. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut short on the on the personal um, experiences that I've had as a dentist and then just shoot straight because essentially what I want to do is just to capture your thought about dentistry you know and just clear out some of the thoughts that most common people have about dentistry you think of a dentist and you just want to run the opposite direction but um, essentially it's a very nice career to be in I mean I qualified in 2010 and my experiences have been very very much amazing I've always been kept on the edge and um, the, the, the doors that it has opened are really quite amazing. I mean, as young as I am, um, having, been studied, uh, having studied at the University of Pretoria, I'm currently the vice president of the SADA Pretoria branch. So it's quite an achievement for myself. When I was a student, I used to look at my senior dentist and wish I was there. And being at the University of Pretoria gave me that chance, you know? Um, but. Um, Back to dentistry, essentially what we're looking for is from grade nine up to 11, students that are highly motivated, that are people orientated, and that are passionate about what they're doing. Because essentially, um, there can be a lot of motivators in life. It could be financial, it could be power, it could be whatever, but your main motivation should be that desire to want to help people or to work with people, you know? Now, what better way to do it in a profession that most people are afraid of? I mean, it has changed quite a lot. Right now, what's happening is we're using a lot of laser technology where you don't even give injections. Now, wouldn't you like that? It's pretty nice. It's pretty nice. Um, but if you look at the type of person, again, you need to be able to communicate very well. Um, you need to be able to have a good approach to things, OK? Um, and be professional, obviously. I mean, if I rocked up here with torn up jeans and an uh, open top, it wouldn't be so professional. But, you know, the image that you carry as a dentist is, is essentially one of professionalism, you see. Um, yes, and then some of the frequently asked questions is, you know, how is the profession? Well, how does it feel? Do you get a lot of time when you're working? Well, I've, I'll give an example. I've got a friend who, at a young age, he, currently he's a registrar in uh, um, neurosurgery at the Johannesburg um, Hospital. And his quality of life is not so good, unfortunately. But he gets to do quite interesting stuff. I mean, he operates on brains. You know, that's interesting enough. But... Um, when we meet every now and then, he's always tired and all of that. But as a dentist, you've got the flexibility of time. You can choose to start working at nine and finish at one if you like, and you've got that caliber of patience, and still meet your daily needs, you see. You never have to miss that soccer practice for your six-year-old. <laughs> that is very, very important, essentially for ladies, because you, you want to be able to have time for your family, okay? But, um, and, and dentistry really does offer that, okay? Some of the things, the profile that you have, you know, employment opportunities, I mean, you can straight away, after you qualify, start your own practice, which is very liberating. You don't have to look to anyone to give you a job. You can essentially become your own business and run it the way you want it. I mean, I know of some dentists who are running cash-only practices and they're very, very successful. It's very liberating when you take holiday when you want to take holiday, okay? Um, or you can choose to go into research. Currently, you know, the university is offering a lot of support for research um, because they want to essentially upgrade that status internationally. So they're putting in a lot of money into research to support young researchers in the university. So that's also a nice um, opportunity to come into. You get to travel for free at, at the university's expense. You get to come and you know discover cutting edge technologies that we can use in the profession itself. So um, 
Alternatively, you can also go into the public sector where you now be the person that come up with the legislature that you know, governs the laws of the profession. So it's, it's quite a wide spread um, um, opportunity there. The admission requirements, I am, maybe I'm sure they've changed, but when I was a student, you needed to have an M score of 24. I don't know how you calculate it now. It's been not so long, but I'm sure things have changed. Okay, and obviously the admission tests that you write during your, your metric year. Uh, I think Prof. White will also um, have a contact of the person you should contact to find out more about that. Okay. Um, yes, um, but what the profession offers again, it offers a lot of stimulation, both for men and women. Okay, there's special at attributes that we're looking for. You need to have that academic potential. How are you going to research when you can't think enough? Okay, we need that. That is very essential. Um, you need to have the right dexterity because it's a, it's a clinical career. You need to be able to work with your hands. You need to have good hand-eye coordination, you know. So those are some of the things you need to have. The softer skills, obviously, your people skills, you need to be dedicated, okay. People don't like working with very difficult characters in workplaces. So if you're a nicer person and you're charming like me, it makes it a little easier. <laughs> um, but overall, you, you, you will have a holistic approach to people. And I think if I had studied elsewhere, I perhaps wouldn't have turned out the way that I am. I come across as a very easy on the eye person. I think I'm very good at my profession. So it makes it easier when you need to collect that money. Okay. <laughs> but um, in closing, I'd like to leave you with words from Oprah that says, um, luck is the point where preparation meets opportunity. Are you prepared to meet that opportunity? This is the point where you will never have another chance like this, okay? And I'm guessing it's grade 11 students here. You need to, not, grade 12. Oh, my, my apologies, my apologies. Grade 12, you either hit it the first time around or not at all. I mean, our classes, they are not more than 70. And the intake is from the whole country and sometimes even from neighboring countries. So if you have to choose 70 students from a population of 53 million odd. It's a very elite hand-picked group. So it depends what you wanna be, you know? But the best thing you can do right now is to be prepared for that opportunity. Thank you.